Welcome to my series on the foundations of social research where I'll be going through Michael Crotty's book chapter by chapter and giving you my thoughts on it. To really benefit from this series I'd suggest you go out and buy a copy of the book. So in chapter one we're presented with our learning scaffolding. Now this presents the reader with a framework that can guide them um, it's a learning approach that leads you as a learner um, and provides you with structures that you can follow that you can then build on yourself because PhD and research is very much self-guided. So this provides the support upon which you can build your own learning experience. So the first element we'll talk about is epistemology. Um, this means about knowledge and speaking about knowledge. Epistemology is the theory of knowledge. It asks, what can we know? There are a range of epistemologies that you might choose. So the first of those we'll talk about is objectivism. And the idea here is that the reality exists and that it is out there for us to find. So this is the world is made of objects such as you know buildings and tables and trees and things we've made and you just need to go out there and find those objects describe them and understand them the next epistemology is constructionism and here truth and meaning comes into existence when we engage with the realities of our world so whilst there may be objects out there they don't really have meaning or truth until we engage with them and we understand them and we create them. So a, a tree might be a tree, but it, it, it doesn't know it's a tree. Other people don't know it's a tree until we apply our mind, our knowledge, and we develop this. The third epistemology is subjectivism. Now, in subjectivism, the meaning is imposed on objects by subjects that that meaning comes from other places other than the interaction of the individual with the object. It's not the object that gives meaning to itself. Other things brought to uh, the object by the subject bring meaning to it. After epistemology, we'll look at the theoretical perspective. Now we learn from and must build on our chosen literature. So whichever literature we look at, um, in the journals we read, we've, we've effectively got to take a philosophical stance. We've got to choose a theoretical basis upon which we're going to work. Now that is a choice. It reveals our preference, but it also reveals our assumptions because every theory brings with it a whole set of assumptions about how the world is and to choose a theoretical basis is a political process we're influenced by those opinions of others by those we study with uh, and those we read so actually it's very much a political process choosing how we understand uh, the, the world through our theoretical lens our methodology is our strategy design or process that we will follow to undertake our research. Here we should explain our rationale for choosing a particular approach to research, lay out our experimental pathway, explain the things we do. It's here that we justify and choose our methods and techniques and explain what they'll tell us and why. So it's about laying out what we're going to be doing experimentally. Next is methods. These are the techniques or procedures that we'll use when we do research. Explanations of methods should be very detailed and specific. We don't just say I did interviews. We need much more detail. Were they face to face? Were they on the phone? Were they structured or semi-structured? How did you decide which questions you use? How long were the interviews? Who did you interview? Why did you interview them? Was that necessary and sufficient? Were there other people? Uh, was it snowballing? How did you identify them? Was it other people gave you those contacts? 
detail is required of your methods if anybody is to reproduce your work and it really does speak to the validity of what you're doing. So this is a very important and very detailed part of your scaffold. So this is the research scaffold as presented by Crotty, starting with epistemology, what can we know, the theoretical perspective you're choosing, your methodology, and then your methods and techniques, and they must all be coherent. So if you believe that the world is socially constructed, you put a very uh, sub subjective um, epistemology, then we'd expect your methods to be all around interviewing people to understand how their different views of the world create uh, our reality and, and that that con con uh, coherence must must line up through all the different steps of your scaffold. Notably absent from Crotty's scaffold is ontology. Now obviously we're we're academics and, and we do differ on this point but I would expect always to see it um, so we've put it on the top there and we'll discuss that now. So ontology is the study of being. And for those really interested in, in the broader philosophy like Heidegger, or I'm particularly interested in Sartre when you're asking about being and essence and does your being precede your essence and your essence precede your being. They're very deep philosophical questions that you can spend ages reading and, and thinking about. Um, but it really fundamentally asks, what is? So does the soul exist? Is it separate to the body? Do we have free will or is the world predetermined? Do we exist as individuals in the world or are we a collective humankind? More simply, are shoes more real than walking and how do they relate? Now, many theories require an ontological assumption. You must commit to something existing in order to study it. Now, some propose that strong theory should have very few ontological assumptions, whereas others commit to everything in the world existing. So you can read further about there. Um, ontology may often seem to overlap with epistemology, and it's for this reason that Crotty hasn't put it in his scaffold. I like to see it, um, particularly in, in PhDs, because I think it's important to have that higher level philosophical uh, consideration before moving on to your epistemology.